ओम ज्ञान ज्ञान चक्षुर तस्मा श्री गुरु नम श्रीमद भागवतम कंटो वन चैप्टर सिक्स टेक्स इलेवन आफ्टर माई डिपैच आई पास थ्रू मेनी फ्लरिशिंग मेट्रोपोलिसीज टाउन्स विलेजेस एनिमल फार्म्स माइंस एग्रीकल्चरल लैंड्स वैलीज फ्लावर गार्डन्स नर्सरी गार्डन्स एंड नेचुरल फॉरेस्ट्स पुपॉट Man's activities in agriculture, mining, farming, industries, gardening, etc., were all on the same scale as they are now, even previous to the present creation, and the same activities will remain as they are even in the next creation. After many hundreds of millions of years, one creation is started by the law of nature, and the history of the universe repeats itself practically in the same way. The mundane wranglers waste time with archaeological excavations. without searching into the vital necessities of life after getting an impetus in spiritual life shri narad muni even though a mere child did not waste time for a single moment with economic development although he passed towns and villages mines and industries he continually went on to progressive spiritual emancipation shrimad bhagavatam is the repetition of history which happened some hundreds of millions of years ago as it is said herein only the most important factors of history are picked up to be recorded in this transcendental literature this is the narrative of narad muni's life in a previous creation spoken by narad muni himself he's talking about how he left whatever was left of his home didn't appear to have a father and then his mother also died and he was only a son of a maid servant i mean only by only i mean he had no uh, social position probably no property so anyway he left and he's describing how he went through so many towns villages pasturing grounds uh, in which there might have been opportunities for work <laughs> but he wasn't interested he was looking for krishna Prabhupada makes the point uh, in this purport. He he often picks up what appears to be a, a a tangential point, or not even the point that's the main point that's being expressed. And he he makes some comment that we can deduce what we can deduce from this. So we can deduce from this that in the previous creation, and in all previous creations, there were the. farms towns pasturing grounds mines villages nursery gardens and so on and that the whole human civilization was going on much in the same way as it's going on now of course we cannot un- deduce this from narad muni's narration but uh, that is clearly there in shastra that how bhutva bhutva praliyate how again and again Krishna states in Bhagavad Gita this material cosmos is brought into being and is again and again destroyed now this goes against the modern misnamed scientific paradigm because what is considered scientific is not very scientific at all I'm reading a book on with an overview of modern science. And having read Prabhupada's books, it's especially life that comes from life. He probably gives us the eyes by which we can see agyana timirandhasya gyanam jana shalaka chakshuran nilitam yena tasmay shigurvena. Opened our eyes to see how these scientists they're talking so many they I, I was just reading how this happened and that happened uh, and the so many things they're talking about how the how the earth came into being and and they took and then there was the the atmosphere was like this and then it was bombarded by meteorites and then this happened and that happened and different uh amino acids were formed and they formed into proteins amazingly because it's not possible <laughs> they even say themselves is because even 
even the simplest protein, it's uh, he, he gives the example. You have to first of all, you have to have the amino acids formed, and then a, for a protein to be for it to work, which are the building blocks of life, you have to have them. All the amino acids have to be in the right order. So it's like by like something like a thousand letter word, and every letter has to be in the right place. Otherwise, it's spelt wrongly. So in the same way, every amino acid has to be in the right place, otherwise the protein doesn't work properly. Of course, it doesn't work anyway if it's not inside the body, which is its only place where it can function, uh, with, or not with, within a cell. So the, the probability of amino acids forming into a minimum 1,000 uh, chain in the right order so that the protein can work, and then not only one, but others also, so they, cause, so they can interact with each other. Of course, that's still not life, but they're, they're speculating on how life formed by chance. So the, the possibility is something like 1 to the minus 400 or something like that, which means impossible, actually. <laughs> Even if the conditions which they speculate on, the perfect conditions for it to possibly do so were there. So they speculate like this and uh, then they say this happened and that happened and something else happened and they give a whole story and it sounds quite plausible if you, unless you realize that it's just total speculation. There's absolutely no proof whatsoever that any of this happened. It's just absolutely, it's, it's science fiction. That's all. It's, usually they say science fiction in the future, but this is science fiction in the past and they're passing it off as science which uh, Prabhupada very succinctly defined as cheating, which it is. So, uh, but then, then it comes back to, well, you know, it's amazing how this happened by chance. It's just, it's practically impossible. But it must, it must have done because the proof is that we're here. Wonderful logic. Superb logic. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's so foolish that uh, that 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 that, they, that their explanation might be wrong. They don't consider, <laughs> but it, our explanation must be right because we're here, and that proves that we, that it's all right. That all our explanation is right. And of course, if you if you go if you go to the uh, an overview of science in twenty years' time, it'll probably be a different fairy tale that they that they tell because based on latest discoveries in which we found that actually this couldn't have happened. And so, all right, so let's rewrite the script a little bit and pass it out as science and teach it in the schools. So, uh, this is, they say, science fiction. They, they have some fantastic things. They, they dare to speculate on the nature of the cosmos and they, they have all these theories about the Big Bang and then, and then they must... And, and, and gravity, and uh, so. Well, we don't. We don't. S there isn't actually. They, what from what they can observe, there's not enough mass in the universe to to make the gravity go on. So they've speculated that there is a a huge amount uh, amount of unseen mass, dark matter, which you can't perceive, but it must be there. Otherwise, how could there be gravity? And then, where does it all go to? Well, then there's black holes because there must be because of it's 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 a house built on a house on a house on a house on a house, but the foundation is a, is a quagmire. <laughs> so don't be. But when one when one story collapses, they they just rebuild it with another fairy. When I'm saying when when one story in the house or one story in their fairy tale collapses, and they find a, some new discovery. And whatever they say is not actually true, then then they make up another story. And there's so many things, so many things. That they, previously, uh, they thought that life could not exist deep in the ocean because the pressure there is so much. But it's full of life, as they first discovered when they, in the 19th century, they pulled up the first transatlantic telegraph cable for repairs and. They were astonished to find it covered with mollusks and clams because it's so deep. There shouldn't be any life there. But there is. And 
and uh, I don't think they've even to date they've come up with any explanation of how it can exist. It's just and there's so many things that just don't fit their theory, and it's it's like that all over the world in, in every in practically every sphere of so-called knowledge. They're just teaching lies. The, 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 that uh, Prabhupada is talking about archaeology, and then, anyway, why should they waste their time digging up bones <laughs> to try to to try to find out what happened in the past? We can tell you what happened in the past: that people were in Maya and they got died, and that's why the bones are there. And uh, you'll also become some bones which someone can dig up in future, and then when they're in Maya, so you can all hey, this, you can all perpetuate Maya gener and we. And they're thinking about well the future generations what should we do for them? and they, they how the future will know about us and they they bury some things like a coca cola and all features of modern life so that people in future can find out what what civilization at present was life or if life is wiped out on earth then then uh, people coming from motherships from the center of the earth or from from another from another galaxy, they can come and drink Coca-Cola, and uh, maybe uh, they can bring Coca-Cola. To, Coca-Cola will live forever. They will bring it to their own galaxy. And uh, insanity! Uh, they think we have to, we have to, for the sake of preserving knowledge, we'll we'll bury all these things and a few books and this and that. And but what about yourself, sir? You're thinking about leaving this legacy for the future but what will happen to you what will happen to you and then, well when we die everything is finished and what, what why are you so bothered and why are you so bothered to discover all these things anyway you're going to die so and if, it, if you, it's all finished then what's the point why are you so concerned that in future the, the human race will discover that we were drinking coca-cola and that's why there's no human race left and <coughs> so the, the, the Insanity. Any, I mean, even you don't. Even without reading Prabhupada's books, anyone who's a little introspective can understand that that this whole so-called civilization is totally bizarre and insane. Yeah. And their idea that that we just popped into existence by chance, and then after, after some time, some meteorite will crash into us, and it'll all be over. Or the or the sun will burn out, or the earth will enter the sun, and it will all be over. Or even the, even the the Christian or Islamic idea that there was nothing and God created everything, and then there, and then there will come a judgment day and it's all over. And wh- wh- who is this God anyway? What's he, he, what are we? Some kind of toys that he's playing with? Or what is this? What's what's the point? It's it's just it's it's just ridiculous. This idea of linear time. But here we find in the, in the Bhagavatam, in the Shastra, uh, it appeals to our intelligence that, that the, the, the idea of circular time, that there is there is creation again and again, and because uh, the the tendency to not be Krishna conscious is there in the jivas, and it happens, it, it's it, it's uh, an eternal tendency. So. Uh, Again and again, the creation is there. Again and again, it's wound up. Again and again, things go on. Not just that there's... In so, even if we take that... What was that? That bishop said the, the, the earth was created how long ago? In, that was the, that was the uh, accepted in Christendom for so many years. One bishop, Buckley or something, did some calculation according to the Bible and said that the earth was... Hmm? The Earth was created five thousand years ago, and and that that was uh, considered knowledge because it's according to the Bible. So and, and even there are some people, some Bible bashers who still say that, right? They still say the Earth was created five thousand years ago, and uh, and the, and then the Day of Judgment will come after two weeks or so. And uh, when it doesn't come, then we'll put the we'll put it back by another couple of years, and they'll go on their whole life like this, and uh, so that puts the whole history of the material world 
uh, the whole history of the human race for about 2,000 years, and it's just, just a 3,000 years, maybe it's just a blip in time. And, what, and in the meantime, uh, all those who don't bash their Bibles, they all go to hell forever, to burn in hell forever. Oh, what is this nonsense? God, cre out of his infinite love, created us, and out of his infinite love, he sends us to hell, most of us to hell forever, because we're not in some particular sect of, of some church. You know that story, that, that about the suicide case, the nun's about to commit suicide, and someone comes up and says, hey, you're going to commit suicide. Don't, don't jump off the bridge. Into, said, well, I'm fed up with life. Have you read the Bible? Yes. Okay, what, what church are you in? I'm a, I'm a Baptist. Oh, me too. So which kind of Baptist are you? Uh, I don't know. I'll make something up. I'm a Reformed Baptist. Oh, I am too. That's great. So which, which reform? That of 1812 or 1917? 1812. Jump off the bridge, you pagan. Die forever. <laughs> Burn in hell forever. <laughs> So only those who are members of the 1970 reform, 1917 Reformed Baptist Church, only they can, can drink the blood of the Lamb and live in uh, the eternal McDonald's in the sky forever, and all the rest will roast in hell forever. So as Bhaktivinoda you know, Thakur pointed out, well, he, he gave a synopsis of Christianity there that uh, God became a man and then died. Oh, no, first of all, there was uh, someone ate an apple and as a result of that, um, man is living in sin forever. But God, being compassionate, became a man and then he died and then he came back again and therefore uh, God was killed. Strange idea. And, uh, and then, he, then he came back after three days, and he was dead. God was dead. Nietzsche was right for three days. Then, uh, then he came, and then he released mankind from the from the scourge of their four mother having eaten an apple. So this is their theology in a nutshell. So as Bhaktivinoda you know, Thakur pointed out, no intelligent person could believe this. No intelligent person could accept this. So the Bhagavatam uh, gives uh, a much more cogent uh, insight into reality. Of course, how much can we understand? Because we have tiny intelligence. But the Shastra is given to appeal to the intelligence of intelligent people and that's that's a great difference between the the Bhagavad Shastra and the uh, Abrahamic religions in which they tell you that well you just have to believe it you you have to believe it and that's all and if you do and if you don't believe this, then you, you you just believe and you're saved, and if you don't believe, then you're doomed forever. And they all say that. So I, I was in a, I was in a, in a dilemma. What shall I do? You know, they say all of them say if you don't believe us, you go to hell. So what shall I do? Shall I make a little spinner wheel and put my finger on it? And this one, this one is marked Catholic. This one is marked Presbyterian. This one is marked Islam. Uh, Shaya, Shaya, this is marked Islam Sunni, this is marked uh, Islam, this uh, Aga Khani, or this one is marked Jew. Well, I'm not allowed in there, so I'm, I have no entrance into that. So I'm finished anyway, I'm just a Gentile, so what's the, what's the hope if I'm not a Jew? If it's only the Jews are the chosen people, I'm not chosen. God already rejected me, according to the Jews. I'm not one of the chosen people. What is their philosophy anyway? If you're not a Jew, what hope is there for you? You can't get born again and become a Jew in your next life. You can marry a Jew or something and become a, accepted as a kind of half Jew or something. No, they, they allow Jewish conversions now. They do? Yeah. 
Really? The previously you weren't. So what happened to all the all the all the Gentiles previously? <laughs> no, but what happened? I mean, they went to hell or what? I mean, I know they went to hell, but what's according to the Jewish philosophy? I don't know. The chosen people, chosen to be tortured by Hitler and all this kind of thing. Anyway, there's no real philosophy. I mean, they have, in uh, the Catholic Church has Thomas Aquinas, and but, you know, just arbitrarily they accepted him. Practically they accept him, that means that the teachings of Aquinas are more important than those of Jesus, according to, to the Catholics, because he, he, he defined it all, right, doesn't it? Well, they didn't really have a philosophy. They didn't really have, a, they didn't really have any philosophy, yeah. There wasn't really any philosophy. There were the sayings of Jesus, and then uh, Aquinas provided a, something vaguely resembling a philosophy, and that's it. Kind of grafted Aristotle onto the creation. Yeah. He, he and Augustine. Too. Yeah. But they had to. They they modified that because according to Augustine, only men have souls. Animals still didn't get granted souls, and and women only got souls around the end of the nineteenth century. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> so. Lucky for you. <laughs> it's it's foolish. Just foolish. I mean how it how intelligent Well, I mean I can understand how science rejected Christianity. More more or less it rejected Christianity, but uh, but science itself is just it's a more sophisticated foolishness. All the all the things they say. And and the cheating is so deep. It's it's so deep how, how they make up all these things and they this happened that happened something else happened. But maybe maybe about twenty years ago, I was on a plane. I was looking over my shoulder at someone's popular science magazine, which says that nowadays uh, scientists think that life arrived on Earth from meteorites. Is and uh, because they found out that. Practically, it's impossible, according to their theories, that it could have come up by evolution. So it must have evolved somewhere else. It's kind of passing the buck onto the meteorites. And then it said, this, then this happened so many thousands of years ago. Then after that, they write, this happened about so many years ago. And then this happened, and that happened, and this happened, and that happened. And then there were dinosaurs. And it's all just based on a total speculation that life, and then they, that life arrived by meteorites in, 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 uh, microbiological form and then this happened and that happened this happened, that happened, no evidence whatsoever, total spe- but they're writing this happened, that happened, as if it's a fact as if as if it's a scientifically confirmed fact so uh, it's amazing the level of of cheating that goes on well, what's, it, what's it like among young people in America nowadays, they still, most of them believe all this stuff or they doubt it or or what? And there's a lot of people getting into like uh, New Age, which I, I guess New Age is a kind of rejection of the of the accepted paradigms, but without anything without anything really to replace it, except some vague mysticism. But that is is that a? Uh, they either will accept this uh, this programming and be you know successful uh, college students and whatnot. Or they don't, and they become very angry, uh, bewildered mm-hmm. youth. You know, then they become devotees. <laughs> well, that's that's hopefully that's like Jai Vedamar and so that all the real hippies became devotees. They, they dropped out and looking for something else. So the real hippies became devotees. But uh, but it's quite a big movement, isn't it? And it's not just kids. No, there's they have these masses. What they call the goths. We were talking about this yeah. yesterday. They all dress in black, and they're all, you know. They hate the the government and the establishment and science and Christians. They feel cheated by everybody, so they. It's kind of. Well, wow, that sounds good. good preaching field. Yeah. yeah. So mm-hmm. they, they kind of they kind of reject everything at that point. You know, every all religion is wrong, all science is wrong because they were cheated once, and it's like it's. But it's good. It, it, I don't know. It's good and, to talk. And about. society hates them too. Yeah. And what do they do? How do they how do they get their bread and butter? 
They don't reject that, right? You've got to read something. You can't talk. You can say you reject society, but it's very difficult to totally reject it. This is where we should have our farm communities, all alternative living. This is the real alternative, with, with real philosophy. We can make good missionaries, goths, huh? They become devotees because they have a feeling that we have already rejected this society. Where are they? They're all over America. Not, not in London. Is it? I never heard of it till yesterday when you told me. Is, is it? You just sort of see it shows how out of touch I am with uh, with the Western world. Goth is derived from Gothic by any chance? Why? I don't know. It's cool or something. Well, Gothic. Or that, uh, Gothic wasn't a rejection of uh, that. That was like mainstream. Well, it's, I don't know. It's been co-opted for uh. that kind of like. Anyway, whatever we, yeah. It's kind of a counterculture, kind of not. Well, that would be a, that would be a good field to preach among. Are we going to the universities and this and that? But maybe an easy, like a more ripe field would be the, instead of trying to get the straight kids, maybe we could go in for the goths. So they're, they're already more intelligent, in as much as they've they've seen through the the cheating. They're um. They're like college dropouts, or, or what? Some, or they're, some of them go to school. Some of them are... Uh, they're weekend goths. I don't know. They're just this... Um, <laughs> it's hard to say. It's like, they're like this like modern type, you know, hippie type uh, culture. Where they, they take drugs like, and everything? Yeah, they have drugs. Or, uh, green and blue. Yeah, green and blue. Oh, that's and that's what the punks used to do. The big jackets that say... You know, oh, that's like the punks then, isn't it? It's no. a mixture. It's a mixture. Yeah, they're, they're, they're a little more. They're more civilized than the punks. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> they're more civilized. Yeah, some go to school. Some punks are still around? Huh? Are punks are still around? No, no, they're not. I just read recently on the news that uh, that they're the, the punk descendants are much more what are much better well adjusted. Some people in the pop culture are saying that punk is dead because of that. Well adjusted punks. Uh huh. You can't be a punk and be well adjusted. Hmm. That's by by definition. Yeah, you're 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 ill adjusted. Mm-hmm. Ad, ad, adjusted means you would accept the inexorable necessity of filling your belly, and, you, and then when you get a family, then your children's belly, and then you have to get a job. That's it. We're all sucked into this society. That's why Prabhupada his his revolutionary program. I don't think our devotees have understood. They don't want our devotees don't want to be revolutionaries anymore. They want to be part of modern society, but the revolutionary problem, living on the land and producing your own food, this is most revolutionary because you just cut out of, with, without money, because you, you just cut out of the society. That's total, that's actual rejection. You grow your own food, you, you produce your own necessities, and you don't need to, have, you don't need to do, have anything to do with the modern society at all. You don't have to interact with it, except for the sake of preaching. Of course, it's difficult because of land laws and all this kind of thing, but Prabhupada had that vision. He was very, he said in India, he said that there's so much land unused, he said, just take it and occupy it. He said, well, what? Well, the government won't allow us. It doesn't matter. The people will support us. Prabhupada was quite revolutionary. In Maharaj, isn't there something like, um, I mean, just the way the world is today that, you know, we would like to have farm communities and we should have them, but there's still kind of like, there's still for a long time to come there's going to be some reliance on technology and modernism for example what might happen to India if India didn't uh, you know if uh, India didn't produce technologically then Pakistan with their very minor technology would overrun India yeah <laughs> destroy the temple India is far more uh, technologically ahead of, of, <coughs> of Pakistan you know not, not to keep its nukes and everything like that I mean it's like yeah it's a consideration well, then the, the, the Pakistanis, they, should, they can also chant Hare Krishna. The power of Krishna consciousness is there. It's not impossible. It's not impossible. Everything's, it was thought impossible that, uh, that Westerners could chant Hare Krishna. So if Westerners can chant, then why not uh, Sindhis, Baluchis, Punjabis, and all the rest of them over there? It might, it might require... Um significantly changing their society in one sense because well westerners the Pakistani culture is in many ways it's 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 very similar 
They're already Indian in so many ways. They speak the same language. They eat the same kind of food. They dress the same way. I mean, it's not traditional Indian, but it's... I mean, enough, I mean many Indians dress the same way as them, which is not Indian, actually. It's not traditional Indian. Salwar Kamis, men and women, everywhere in Pakistan, that's all they wear. You do see a few saris, even Muslims. But, but I, I guess I'm referring to kind of like the government and the culture that, you know, it's, you know, that if you try to be some sort of religion, I mean, we've seen that gradually over time in, in uh, Pakistan, you know, mm. that, you know, the Hindu, you know, groups have been, you know, gradually wiped out. Maybe. It's not true. Isn't it? Well, I mean, there are, they're not, there's not many left. They've there's mostly left that. there. But... Uh, I mean, is it increasing? Is the Hindu population increasing there or decreasing? Or? I'm not sure. It's probably fairly steady because going backwards and forwards, there's not much going backwards and forwards. And uh, it's probably... It's, it's only about three lakhs anyway, the whole Hindu population all over the country. But uh, they're into their religion more than in... More, you, you don't find this kind of secular Hindu, like in uh, India, who are not interested in religion. They're all into it. But so, so under what conditions, I mean, social conditions or things, could uh, like Krishna consciousness in Muslim countries actually flourish? And it's a big question. It's, it's the, the, the Islamic world is a... Uh, it's, the, it's the one frontier which ISKCON hasn't really made much inroads into. But... Uh, I'm sure if we try for it, then in, in Krishna will show sooner or later some miracle will happen. There are, there are Muslims in the Western world that they, they, they're taking up. Iran is the, by far the most ripe field so far discovered for preaching Krishna consciousness. And if the society changes there, if it, if it went back to the openness of the Shah's time, relative openness, it's not really openness, but it, even, even in the present conditions there are so many devotees there. So that's a good field. And there are Muslim devotees in Pakistan also. But it's very secret because it's very dangerous. There's a law in Pakistan, if anyone tries to convert a Muslim to any other religion, there's only the, 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 the mandatory punishment that the judge has no choice but Fasi Lagana. Hanging. That's all. There's no life imprisonment or reprieve, nothing, no choice. It's such a, such a hypocrisy, and they kind of like so much into conversion of other people. <coughs> such a hypocrisy, because they want the whole world to be converted to Muslim. Well, they believe in it. We want the whole world to be converted to Krishna consciousness. Actually, you can't convert anyone to Vaishnavism, Bhaktisthan, that's what he said, because everyone is a Vaishnav. <laughs> it's a little different. One thing, I know you're very much into comparing the social conditions and how they give rise to movements and this and that. But one thing we should remember is that uh, Krishna consciousness is, because it is the Jaiva Dharma, is the, the inherent nature of the soul, that uh, although you may say it may arise in certain social conditions, and Prabhupada said the, that Krishna created the hippie movement to facilitate my preaching um, the Krishna consciousness is not dependent on social conditions. It's, it, it, it's not that social conditions have to change before Krishna consciousness can be accepted. It may... Uh, act as a catalyst or it may be helpful in that. It may appear to be so, but ultimately... The, the, the major factor in Krishna consciousness being spread is Krishna's mercy and the desire of his devotees to bring that mercy to others. That's why I'm on my juice fast, because I have a certain problem which is the cause of much inconvenience. Did you turn that over? Turn that tape over? Yeah. Oh, <coughs> Yeah.
Krishna? Are you guys Krishna? 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 Where Muslims come to saw the streets and <coughs> yeah, it's for everybody. Maybe eventually they will help. We have those gothic stuff. Don't cheat on the history. Yeah, people will realize that. Yeah, those are people next time. Yeah, yeah, it's people who are cheating. They want to be in London to be rich in the central London mosque. They can see what it was all about. He came back very disappointed because he said they can't preach to convert people. They can't. They can't preach. They had. Yeah. To uh, uh, some guys yeah, trying yeah. to preach to him, yes. but they were conflicting, they were like yes. contradicting yes. each other all the time, and they were shouting, <coughs> and they were too quiet, let me talk. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've had to do it a couple of times with them, um, with the Muslims in uh, the parking lot, trying to give them a book, and they're like, I won't take the book because of this and that, and it's like every day, so uh, ludicrous, you know. <laughs> Lots. There's still punks in England. Yeah, there's still a small pocket of punks. You see them occasionally. Do they realize they're dying? <laughs> well, they must do because there's no. Uh, you just see the odd punk. <laughs> they have some clubs still where they hang out, and, but very few. I always thought the goths were like descendants of the punks. Yeah, it's like a mixture. It's like a new age mixture. Yeah. And when you had the straight edge movement, that was kind of a, I don't know, like a, I don't know if it was an offshoot or, you know. One thing's for sure, we have a lot of work to do. <laughs> we have to establish these farm communities, preach in the Islamic world, and then uh, even within our own movement, there's so much preaching to get it, and to get things in the right shape. And a lot of work to do. Prabhupada has very kindly left us a lot of work to do. There's So, sounds like the Goths is an exciting preaching field. Need lots of prasadam, right? Yeah. Vegans, probably. What's that? Uh, anyway, well, I don't know. Give them prasadam. <laughs> we have a lot of work to do on many fronts. So, any other comments? But many, a lot of work to do, but the, the basic preaching strategies are the same that Prabhupada gave. Distribute books, distribute prasadam, have harinam, festivals, all these things. The, uh, the, the farm community is one that hasn't taken off in a big way, but that's that's also an essential part. Prabhupada gave us all the things, all the things needed to make the world fully Krishna conscious. It, it is, I mean, it is true also that we. I'm not saying that we shouldn't study the social conditions. As that Prabhupada did when he first came to America, is described that he spent some time just for, for some time he was just kind of looking around and seeing where people are at and like this. He didn't change the philosophy or anything, but. He, he saw where the people are at and and uh, because some kind of cultural uh, meeting has to be there you, you, you have to it's communication so how is America ch this is totally uh, from this social perspective or sociological or behavioral aspect. Has America changed? How has it, how has it changed since 9-11, 2001? In, 
there's been a big change in the outlook of the American people? Um, I would say that, um, that people are more concerned about their safety and security. Mm. Um, they're much less uh, suspicious of mil military uh, than they used to be, for example. When Just see, it's a military conspiracy. You know, when 9-11 uh, <laughs> happened, uh, Harvard afterwards, Harvard for the first time in 30 years, allowed the CIA to recruit on campus. Hmm. That's a big thing for Harvard University. Hmm. You know, before, you know, in the 60s or the 70s, you know, with, you know, Vietnam and, you know, I guess the CIA scandals and uh, Harvard banned the CIA from coming to the campus. Hmm. And it must have unified the, Ameri the American people in a kind of even more we are American way of thinking. Well, it, it, well, it especially scared academia. It shook them up a little bit that they couldn't go around preaching their liberal, you know, uh, hogwash dribble. That you know, it's like uh, what just tolerate everyone. Just tolerate everyone. Yeah. You know, it also kind of strengthened this whole. Uh, People do think it's them or them, them or us, and you know they may be right. They're, you know, What's Iraq things. got to do with 9/11? Uh, it's um, it's it's kind of like a I don't know what is it? It's an excuse. Wyatt Earp or something going in to clean up. You know, it's like so fool. It's a different attitude also. They they putting all Muslims together in the sense when 9/11 happened. They showed all over Muslim countries, people were having more like a Diwali. Mm -hmm. They were like having fireworks and dancing in the streets. Yeah. So they just put all Muslims together again. Like everybody is feeling the same yeah. day, you know. So mm. it's like America on one side and all Muslim countries together, you know. So it's like Iraq or Iraq. It's, uh, it's amazing how Maya works. It's just like they're, they're like lemmings running to their death. I mean, they're just. <laughs> Sometimes I just wonder not to be so apocryphal or something. Um, mm. You know, this is kind of like, uh, you know, maybe uh, an opportunity. You know, Everything we should see is an opportunity for preaching. I mean, when you have, you know, big, you know, conflicts, wars like this, I mean, this has always really shook up people. I mean, okay, you talked about the sociology, you just mm. know what societies are going through, but when societies are shaken up, that's when people, they start looking around for other answers. Right, yeah, yeah. Just, just an interesting statistic to throw out mm. on that is uh, South Korea. Um, <coughs> in the time that they were modernizing, they went from kind of like an agrarian society to an industrial society. Mm. Um, their Christian population went from something like 3% to about like 35 to 45. And it's still one of the best places for preaching in the world. We, we've never taken advantage of it because well there, there was an incident in the 1970s where Chirag Maharaj went there and he, he made a, a big blunder in his by presenting Krishna consciousness as uh, as uh, spiritual communism and they they're being totally allergic to any kind of communism they throw him out even the mention of communism they throw him out and uh, have not welcomed our movement ever since might do it now because they're, 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 yeah, they're, they're, they're fav actually favorable to the idea of unification of the North now. Mm. No, I think there is some scope for preaching there. They're, 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 I might go there next year. Let's see. If I do this round the world ticket, I was thinking next time maybe uh -huh. instead of stopping in Japan, I'll stop in Korea, which is just next door. It's, it's like halfway to India or something. But, you know, improving, what is it? Going from 3% to like 30%. That's, that's a major social change. No, we, it's a major we, cultural change. Yeah, we can't ignore those kind of statistics. If, you know, I don't think. Yeah. 
Of course, only a tiny little country. But, uh, a tiny little country at least. Hmm. <laughs> it's got more population than Albuquerque. Yeah. But in Albuquerque, I think the, the scope here is, uh, is huge. I was talking to some friend the other night, last night. Uh, you, met, you met up with him? Did he yeah. actually come on the bus? Well, no, this is another friend, the one that works at the co op. Um, he's one of these college kids. He said that there's so many kids, and there's tons of them that are just bored, you know, with everything to the point where they start doing them like uh, all kinds of weird things. Like, that happens in small towns. Weird things. The kids get bored. Yeah. There's tons of them. There's like a whole army of like really bored kids, and they're all like, you know, hip kids. Hmm. Do they have a, do they have a place they teach them? I don't know. I think they're all living at home. They're all living at home. And they all just get, hang out on the streets, is it? Yeah. They hang out on the streets. There's no place to go. That's why we need a center. They can come. They can come on to here. Do a lot of Hari Nam. We need some more people. We got a few now, right now. How about today? They where where do people congregate on Sundays, if at all? Let's see. We used to go down by the university. Sundays, not too many people are on the streets. Right downtown, or miles up and off the road, there's something about a, a fair or something, a people's fair? Yeah, there's a fair. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that would be good for book distribution also, wouldn't it? So, let's see, I don't know, we, let's see, we, do, we have to go, um, I don't know if we could go into the fair and do that or not. Out the door. We were going to go out on book distribution anyway, but it would be outside of the outskirts. Is that what we're going into? Why not? Yeah, but I, I just I spoke to one devotee who was who lives in North Carolina. He comes here any kind of fair to sell T-shirts and mm. hats and any kind of things. Mm. That's what he does when everybody comes in. Uh, we were going to be Check it out if we even go today. On a, on a side note to what we were talking about, uh, Maharaj, um, I thought it was just interesting how you had mentioned uh, digging up these skeletons. And um, I know that, you know, like the devotee scientist, like Sadaputta, mm. and Karma, that's one of the Graham Hancock. Um, Graham Hancock? He's not, he's not, he's not like an ISKCON devotee, but he's very favorable. He's best friends with Chutu Karma, he's mm. an Indian wife. He grew up in India. He's a very nice scientist. I don't know. Uh, they, they have videos and books out where, like, it's they say the establishment t digs up like a, a missing link type skeleton, skeleton. You know, where they'll they'll put it together and it's oh, this is the missing link or this is our ancestor or something like that. They can uh, the devotee scientists can rearrange the skeleton to be a human skeleton just as easily. You know, where there's this mm. uh, misinformation. Uh, yeah, they showed that in that book, Forbidden Archaeology, that they dug up one bone one place and another bone somewhere else and put it all together and said this is the missing link mm -hmm. just cheating like you just take and rearrange it to be just a human skeleton and millions of years old mm -hmm. you know, human just like we are so. yeah 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 they, they've found so many artifacts which are billions of years old before the, before the earth is even supposed to come into existence No, no, sorry, before the, uh, which, which by their dating methods are before the human race came into existence. So it'll have its effect, their work. Because the scientists, if it's propagated, the scientists can't ignore it. If it goes on being propagated, they can't ignore it. They'll just put their dates back, that's all. That's what they've been doing for years. They're always putting the dates back. There, there's major problems with their putting the dates back too. They say, well, life began on this date, and then they, they move it back a few million years. But that means that previously they'd said, well, this happened and that happened, this was all in place at this time, and therefore life arose at this time. But how can they... It's, it's, it's a very complex ecosystem so how can they change the dates of all of it? It's uh, it's really cheating. Because they said, 
This was in place at this time, this was in place at this time. This, all the conditions were favorable for creating life. So then they find that one, they find evidence or that there was life before that. So whatever they call evidence, it's all just guesswork anyway. But then they, they move the whole day, the whole thing back. But then, then how can they just change the date of everything all at once? That means that they were just guessing in the first place, bluffing. It's not, I mean, Prabhupada in life comes from life. In, in, in layman's terms, just showed how they're cheating. It's not that difficult to do. Okay, shall we finish there?